Horde is a collection of politically aligned mortal races who mostly hold dominance on the continent of Kalimdor. Traditionally, the Horde has been locked in constant war with their rival faction, the Alliance. However, the Horde of ages past has undergone great changes since the Orcs first crossed into Azeroth via the Dark Portal. The contemporary Horde has thrown aside the worship of demons and excommunicated its more warlike members. Furthermore, the Horde has begun to take on new members, each with their own goals and ambitions, but all loyal to the Horde's overarching motto, strength and honor. One, the Orcs. The Orcs are a prolific and physically powerful race hailing from the once lush world of Draenor, now known as Outland. These days, the Orcs, loyal to the Horde, are a shamanistic people who live in a clan-based society, returning to their ancestral roots. The Orcs are the predominant race found within the Horde. Their war chief Thrall, the de facto founder of the Horde's current state, and he reigns as the undisputed leader of the faction in its entirety. Because the Orcs are not native to this planet, an Orcish diaspora saw them migrate all across Azeroth in search of a land to call their own. Their settlements can be found from the southern reaches of Stranglethorn to the frozen hollows of the Alterac Valley, but the Orcs are most populous in their new capital of Duratar. Here, one can find a fortress city built from rugged hides and tribal structures, cut into a canyon, Orgrimmar, which serves as both the Orcish capital and the overall capital for the Horde, cementing the Orcs' position in the Horde as the first amongst equals. 2. The Trolls While trolls of various tribes and loyalties can be found all over the world, the Darkspear clan, hailing from the Echo Isles, is loyal only to the Horde. The Darkspear are a superstitious people, practicing an obscure form of mysticism, which they call Voodoo. They live alongside the Orcs in Duratar, adopting Orgrimmar as their temporary capital, as the Echo Isles have been lost to the rogue witch doctor, Zalazani. Guided by the Shadow Hunter, Vol Jin, the Darkspear plan on returning to inhabit the islands one day but as of now are content to make new friends and gather potential allies in Kalimdor. Three, the Tauren. Across the vast barrens dwell the Bloodhoof tribe of Tauren, a huge bipedal race of bovine men loyal to both their high chieftain, Cairn Bloodhoof, and the Horde. The Tauren's enormous size and outrageous strength betray their kind and gentle nature. While they are fully capable of brutality when cornered, the Tauren prefer to live peacefully, hunting and gathering in their home province of Mulgor. Not long ago, the Tauren were hunted by the voracious centaur all across Kalimdor, but now they have removed this existential threat with the help of the Horde, ensuring the Tauren is the most stalwart allies to the War Chief's cause. 4. The Forsaken Not all members of the Horde are as enthusiastic as the Tauren. The Forsaken are zombified humans and elves who fought against the Orcs in the days before their undeath. And again, during the Third War, the Forsaken were nothing more than mindless pawns of the Lich King, who sought to unhinge all living races from the world in service to powers even beyond himself. However, the Lich King was weakened after an attack from the demon hunter Illidan, which freed many of the servants bound to his will, as the Lich King's power is what binds the undead into unthinking service. Without his constant voice in their ear, the Forsaken freed themselves instead of running wild, though their minds were forever corrupted by plague and darkness. Having regained autonomy in a world which viewed them with outright hostility, the Forsaken Banshee Queen, the she-elf Sylvanas Windrunner, was able to negotiate peace with the Horde. 
a neutrality which has settled into an uneasy alliance of convenience. The Forsaken still scheme with their own dark agendas, but remain as crucial members of the Horde, strengthening the War Chief's grip over the shattered lands of Lordaeron. 5. The Blood Elves The Elves of Quel'Thalas will certainly not be the last race to join the Horde, but are a significant addition which should not be overlooked. The Elvish civilization has been on a rapid decline. Not too long ago, they were known as the High Elves, until the Death Knight Arthas destroyed their homeland, single-handedly reshaping the destiny of the Elves as a people. After having lost their war against the Lich King, the Blood Elves chose to follow the demon hunter Illidan into the shattered realms of Outland, where they discovered their addiction to magic was slowly killing every member of their race. Becoming disillusioned with their new master, many Blood Elf refugees returned to their ancestral homelands, where they were quick to make allies with their former High Ranger, the Banshee Queen Sylvanas. The Blood Elves joined the Horde with the knowledge that the Human Alliance had failed them, and the weakness of men nearly caused their kind to go extinct by the Lich King's hands, and they would have vengeance. 6. The Ebon Blade. Unlike the other members of the Horde, the Death Knights are not a tribe or kingdom of a single race, but instead are champions of all Horde races, who at one time or another fell victim to the Lich King's allures and promises of darker powers. While they are once again loyal to the Horde, Death Knights are ostracized from society for the atrocities they committed in service to the Lich King. Now, the Death Knights follow Darien Mograin, who seeks both penance from those he turned his back on and vengeance against those who enslaved his kind. The very existence of a Death Knight is a torturous ordeal, trapped in an unfeeling husk of a body, constantly aware of how they once embraced their status within the Scourge, slaughtering their friends and loved ones without remorse. They can only hope to regain the honor they lost and use their great and terrible powers for the betterment of the living. The Horde the Horde has been judged and dismissed as a motley collection of uncivilized barbarians who have aligned themselves with wicked creatures and fallen men. But this is not the case. The Horde stands united, an alliance forged through war and sustained by a shared code of strength and honor. Under the War Chief Thrall, the Horde has evolved from an assortment of savage monsters to a proud people who value not just power, but wisdom and camaraderie. Members of the Horde respect their ancestors while valuing independence and the right to self-govern. They are not a single nation, but a coalition of many, united against a world which would see each destroyed apart. They are a faction led by off-worlders and composed of outsiders, inhabited by outcasts and refugees, all fighting side by side, not just for freedom, but their very survival. Divided, these isolated states would cling to sovereignty, enemies closing in around, but together, their power dwarfs any nation in the world. 